welcome to the 2019 MTA 98365 Windows Server 2016 Administration Fundamentals. We will be beginning a brand new module at this point in time, believe it or not. And the title of this module is Understanding File and Print Services. Let's take a look at the little objectives and the order in which they're going to be covered during this particular presentation. And they are as follows. We have only one, imagine that, we only have one focus area we'll be discussing, file and print services. First item on our agenda is discussion of NTFS. NTFS stands for New Technology File System. Basically, the main purpose of file, this new technology file system is because of this added security benefits. Likewise, you have the ability to lock those permissions down all the way down to the file level. As you can see in this panel here, we see in this situation where this is looking at system, it has the type of control. In fact, in this one, if you look at the very right panel, they have the ability to modify, they have the ability to read and execute, but they do not, in fact, have full control. And in fact, this is Ted. He has all these different permissions, but he, he does not have full control of that file. When you're using groups, in this case, with NTFS permissions, to simplify administration, you can grant permission utilizing groups. That's the way you want to manage them, through the utilization of groups, whether they're by user. By assigning those various, what we call, NTFS permission to a group, you are granting permission to one or more people simultaneously, reducing the number of entries into each, what we call, access list, as well as the amount of effort required to grant multiple people access to certain files and folders. Now, for the different types of files or NTFS permissions concerned, basically there are two types. We have explicit permissions, which simply means permission granted directly to the file or folder. Then we have inherited permissions, which are permissions that are granted to a folder, a parent object or container that flows into the child object or subfolder files into the parent folder. Now, besides granting, uh, granting the allowed permission, you can also grant the, what we call the deny permission. In this case, we see the uh, permissions that have been granted. We have full control, they have been all the way down the right extended attributes. Now, for us copying and moving files, when you're going through the process of systematically copying and moving files, the following three scenarios can result. First of all, if the folder file is copied, the new folder or file will be automatically acquired the permissions of the drive or the folder to which it's being copied. On the other hand, if the folder or file is removed within the same volume, the folder or file will retain the same permission that was already assigned. If the file, if in this case, if the folder or file is moved from one ticket and you move from one volume to another, the folder or file will automatically acquire the permission of the drive to which it's being moved. For continue on with file and folder ownership, the owner of an object controls how permissions are set on the object and to whom permissions are granted. If for some reason you have been denied access to a file or folder, you need to reset the permission by taking ownership of the file and or folder, and then you're going back through the process of systematically again monitor, uh, modifying the permissions. All administrators automatically have the take ownership permission of all NTFS object. Encryption is in fact a process of converting data into a format that cannot be read by another user. Once a user has encrypted files, it automatically remains encrypted when stored on the disk. Decryption, on the other hand, is, is a different in that what it does is a process what? Converting that data from an encrypted format back to its original format. Once the user has a decrypted file, the file remains decrypted when stored on the disk. EFS, which stands for Encrypted File System, is a, cold, is a core file encryption technology that's used to store encrypted files on an NTFS file system volume. Encrypted files cannot be used unless the user has access to, file, access to the keys required to, in effect, decrypt the information. After the file has been encrypted, you do not have to, you do not have to auto manually again decrypt that file before you can use it. 
whether once you encrypt a file or folder, you can work with that file or folder just as you would with any other file or folder. We have, again, this is a screenshot showing the encrypted file system. And we have a couple of options. We can have folder is ready for archiving. A lot of files in this folder have con context, in in other words, index in addition to the properties and encrypted content to secure the data. Another great option that we can employ is called sharing folders. Most users are not going to log into a server directory to access their data files. Instead, a driver folder will be shared, such as a shared folder, and they will access the data file over a network. To, protect, to pro help protect against what we call unauthorized driver or folder access, you should use shared permission along with NTF permission, assuming the shared folder is on the same new technology file system volume. When a user needs to access a network share, he or she will use, again, we call this a universal naming convention, which is outlined or displayed here in this slide. Here again, taking a look at, again, the folder sharing. Then we have our share permissions. When you think about share permissions, share permissions that are available are as follows. You have full control, change, read. And we also realize that because users can be members of several groups, it's possible for them to have several sets, of what we call explicit permission for a particular folder or file. When this option, when you encounter a situation like this, the permissions are combined to form the effective permissions, which are the actual permission when logging in and accessing a file or folder. Here again, taking a look at a screenshot of our call our network discovery browsing. For the administrative shares is a shared folder typically used for your administrative purposes, usually hidden. It, 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 to make any shared folder drive hidden, the, the share name must have, again, a dollar sign at the end of it. In other words, for us to hide that file. Because the shared folder of drive cannot be seen during browsing, you have to use a universal naming convention to find the folder drive, which includes the share name, including Again, that dollar sign. By default, all hard drive, in other words, these volumes with hard drive letters automatically have administrative shares. Other hidden shares can be created as needed for individual folders. For as our network printing is concerned, once your basic network services, again, it, one of your basic network services is obviously printing, in which multiple users can share the same physical printer. This is cost-effective solution, obviously, when you have multiple, multiple employees in different type locations. As a future administrator or future, again, Windows 2016, again, uh, administration type, again, certification acquisition, once you acquire that, acquire that certification, you, you'll be able to start, you know how to do what, start to do the two different types of printers, for example, local and network for it's printed on Windows, when you install the physical computer, what happens? Microsoft refers to it as a print device. You must first connect the printer, and then you need to, at that point, turn it on. Next, you need to create what we call a logical printer. Microsoft refers to this as the printer, which will provide a software interface between your print device and the actual application. When you create a printer, you can also load up print drivers that act as a translator for Windows and the programs running on Windows so that they can, do not have to worry about specifics of the printer's hardware, hardware in other words, and the printer's language. Here again, it's talking about when you installing your printers, if you have the correct permission to add a local printer or a remote shared printer, you can use the Add Printer Wizard to install a printer. After that point in time, once that printer is installed, it would appear in the devices and printer folder as well as device manager. Here's the screenshot showing someone going through the process of literally adding a printer. When the add printer dialog box appears, specify the port to which the printer is connected. If the printer, obviously in this case, is connected directly to the network, you will have to create a standard TCP IP port. The, the TCP IP printer port uses host port 9100 
to communicate. Here's an example of our print drivers. Now, as far as a printer pool is concerned, network printers usually, uh, are usually used from, by more than one user. If you have a high value of print job, the printer can become congested and user will have to wait for the document to print. Either you can purchase a faster printer or you can create a, a group of printers called a printer pool that acts as a single virtual printer with a, with a single print queue, in other words. Users print to a single printer and then a print job is distributed among the printers within that particular pool. Here again, taking a look at our printer's property. With most printers, you have a wide range of different options. Although these options vary obviously from printer to printer, they are easily accessible by right-clicking the printer in the devices and printer folder and selecting printer's properties. Here's our printer's permission. Printers are, cons are considered objects. Therefore, you have to sign permission so they depends on who can use the printer, who can manage the printer, and also who can ma manage, obviously, these print jobs. We also have a term called your print spooling folder. When a print device is available, what happens is the spooler retrieves the next print job and sends it to the print device. By default, the print folder is located within the C Windows System 32 spool printers. If you have a server that handles a large number of print jobs or several large print jobs, make sure that the drive make sure the drive where the where the spool folder is has sufficient disk space. We can also engage what we call internet printing. And basically, in order for you to enable internet printing on your computer with a Windows Server 2016, you need to install the internet printer printer role service. To install the internet printer client in Windows Server 2016, you simply add the feature in, the, in, the, in the, what we call the server manager, select the internet printing client checkbox, and then you simply click OK. To manage a server by using website, by utilizing what we call internet printing, what you simply do is you open up your web browser, you navigate again to the server name and the printers, and you're able to open that up and actually do what we mentioned here, be able to print from the internet. Now, for as audit is concerned, security can be divided, obviously, in this case, to three different areas. Authentication is used to prove the identity of the user. Authorization basically gives the access to the user that was authorized, or in other words, authenticated. To complete the security picture, you need to enable auditing so that you can have a record of the users who have logged in and what the users access or try to access because that can be an indicator as to why you have these issues at this point in time. Here's an example of a screenshot showing auditing in taking place. We can also, it's important that we audit our files and our folders. You must first enable object access using group policy. You must also specify which objects you want to audit. And so again, here's a screenshot of auditing. And so in our upcoming presentation, which is module number seven, we're going to open up with a brand new topic. And that topic is Windows Network Services and Applications.